In today's video, how to design your own training program with the Strength Guy. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to explain how to build a training program, how you can design your own training programs. And uh, to do that, I brought in my friend Chris Guy here. So I met Chris at USF. Yeah, I wore this shirt on purpose. This is actually this is actually your powerlifting meet. That's right. Coming up. When's the date of that? April 6th. April 6th at USF. So I'll put a link below. Totally not the purpose of this video, but if you're looking for a powerlifting meet to do, um, it's a good one. Actually, what is this, fourth year now? Uh, fifth year coming up. Oh, five, five years. Time yep. flies. Um, but today we want to talk about how to build your own training programs. And, you know, my goal with this whole channel is to help people out. I don't have the ability to coach everybody in the whole world. Um, and, and, and so what I like to do is just give out free information. And Chris here was a great resource when I was going to school at USF. He's worked with some great people. So I'm going to let Chris tell you a little bit about himself, his training background, uh, coaching background. Then we'll get into the specifics of how to design a training program for you including things like volume, intensity, frequency, and uh, we'll get into that in just a second. So Chris, why don't you give us the, uh, the thousand foot view of who you are? Yeah, so I graduated with my undergrad degree in exercise science at USF, where Paul was actually one of my classmates. Didn't even realize who he was at the <laughs> time quite. Um, and then from there I went on to physical therapy school, and I'm actually in my last semester right now about to finish that up. Now, during my undergrad time, I worked in Dr. Bill Campbell's lab, um, performance and physique enhancing lab, um, doing research on powerlifting, bodybuilding, all of At that time, I was also coaching and starting the powerlifting team at USF, and that's where I really started to get my background with coaching. So from there, just getting exposure, more clients, more people. I've worked with international, national, regional, all levels powerlifters, um, and then even other populations. So for example, I coached the dean of my school for a little bit of time. Um, so I've kind of seen all Don't of Don't want to screw that up. Yeah, no, definitely didn't want to screw that one up. So. Uh, kind of spread my my uh, perspective across different areas of coaching, um, as well as doing my own research there in the lab at that time. So now in my time at physical therapy school where I've gained all these this knowledge and understanding from my first degree in exercise science, I can now apply it with other perspectives and tools I use from physical therapy uh, to bring it all in together into one true training kind of package. From there. Yeah, so Chris has kind of caught my eye over the last couple of years because I've seen some of the bodybuilders and powerlifters that he's trained um, that are just excelling at such a high level. He's actually doing the training for Stephen Bogrand, who I swear every time I see him, he puts on a pound of lean body mass and hits a PR. With that in mind, I wanted to talk to Chris a little bit about a few things. He doesn't know I'm going to ask him to write me a training program, um, but I wanted to talk to him about how I can help you guys create training programs for yourselves and what are some of the principles we need to pay attention to. Now, I have a free training introductory guide for complete beginners, and I mean for people that have literally hardly ever set foot in a gym. I'll link that below, but that is just completely on how to choose a gym, a basics on nutrition, and a basics on training. So what we're going to talk about today are a little bit more advanced topics, more of an intermediate phase. Once you've gone through that beginner, you've been in the gym a couple couple times, and you want to start to put some some knowledge into it. So, Chris, why don't you just give us the basics of what you look for when you're creating a training program for somebody for the first time? Yeah. So, first things off, having a program itself, we actually know from the research is better than just going in and kind of freeballing it, right? Having something in mind, whether that's on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whatever, um, having that plan is really the first place to go. Now, when it comes to actually building this plan and bringing it all together, the first thing you have to know is what exactly is your goal. Luckily, most of us, our goal is be more jacked, right? Get tan um, and stay healthy for the most part, right? Um, so that's kind of a pretty simple way to start versus, you know, it's not like we're working with football players or anything like that where yeah. they have to work with strength, power, endurance. No, it's really how much size can you put on without putting on too much fat um, and staying healthy in the long run. So, with that being the goal, the first places that we tend to look to are going to be our main kind of perspectives of training. So that's going to be your volume, intensity, and frequency. Um, now most people know what these are, but in case you don't, volume would be how much load you're lifting, 
sets times reps is typically how we see it, and that's the total amount of work that you're accumulating. Intensity a lot of times is going to be dictated by the percent of one rep max or percent of weight you're lifting, really how difficult it is for the most part. Um, there's other ways we can manipulate intensity more than just load, but for the most part that's how we see it. And then frequency is how often we're doing that. Now frequency can be lift based, how many times am I squatting, benching, deadlifting, it can be body part based, right? How many times a week am I using my delts, right? If I'm having any sort of lagging body part, that can be a factor. Having those three pieces is really the nuts and bolts where you're gonna wanna start and starting on this wide view and then working your way in with the underlying principle of this is what my goal is, in this case, getting bigger, right? Getting stronger. So I like to start off with my training volume as well as my frequency. Most people know how many times they're gonna be lifting in the gym, whether that's three days a week, five, seven, whatever the case might be. Most people I see on average, they're lifting between that four to six days a week. Um, and most intermediates I'd say that four to six days a week is good. Maybe not super heavy, right? With a ton of work, six days a week. In terms of body parts, we know time and time again that we're seeing at least two times a week for most body parts, be that legs, back, chest, all of that. Um, two times a week is a good place to start. If you have anything specifically lagging, there's nothing wrong with going three times a week. Okay, Chris, so someone that's just been training as a beginner, um, and, and I found this, I got caught up in the idea that I could really only train a, a, a muscle group once a week. Um, there was this big prevailing theory of like overtraining um, when I came up in the sport, when I was reading all the magazines. And when I introduced something called, you know, multiple frequency, lifting twice per week for the same muscle group, I saw an enormous amount of progress. So I think if we're helping somebody, would you say that's the first place to look is if you're training a body part once a week, maybe, you know, you're doing a three day, like a full body, you know, upper lower type of training split, moving to hitting a body part twice a week. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it doesn't have to be about just absolutely obliterating yourself, right. right? Getting so sore that you can't lift for another seven days that specific body part. In fact, we see reintroducing that dose of load and volume can actually be more beneficial and you won't necessarily have to be as sore time to time again, right? Yeah, I think that's actually a, a, one of the problems I run into with people that I coach for the first time is that they say, well, I left the gym and I wasn't fatigued or exhausted. Um, I think we almost start to assume that that's a necessity. Yeah, no, for sure. And it totally, I understand why you feel it might need Yeah, it feels good sometimes yeah, to do that. And especially when we're first starting off, right? We, yeah. I legitimately enjoyed that feeling of being sore for those few days. Um, but if our goal is to really be as big and strong as possible, um, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to be so sore every single time going through. So how would you suggest someone that wants to write their own training program go about this? Do you suggest they start writing down their total training volume and say an Excel document and kind of tracking that from workout to workout? Yeah, so that's definitely a good place to start and it doesn't have to be every single lift, right? I typically focus on what are my main lifts, yeah. what are the big key components that I'm trying to work on squatting, hip thrusting, deadlifting, whatever it might be, even leg pressing, that's a big major uh, muscle groups yeah. being used, um, and tracking from there. Now, typically we're gonna start with those big movements to train the movement itself, to build the strength, build this base at which we can put some hypertrophy on top of. Um, so that's gonna be working in more of that lower rep range, doesn't have to be as low as one to three reps, right? But starting from there and then working our way out and tracking that volume early on. So whether that's your sets times reps times percent, um, or your total tonnage, which would be your sets times your reps. So I think this is a great place to start. And what I want from you guys, first of all, is to leave a comment below and let me know what else we can help you with as far as setting up your training program. So I think the big takeaway for today is just look at what you're currently doing. It's gonna require a little bit of work. So guys, the bottom line is once you get to a place where you're a little bit more advanced to an intermediate level, you're gonna to have to put a little bit more effort into program design, um, making sure you're getting good recovery and that you're constantly progressing, okay? And so that's what is required to, to progress. And so someone that wants to get better at their diet, as Chris just pointed out to me, is gonna start tracking macros, they're gonna start tracking their calories, they're gonna start paying more attention. Same thing comes to your training, guys. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I don't wanna to get too long. Chris will be back. 
Make sure you guys follow his Instagram page. He puts out plenty of great stuff. I'm gonna put it on the screen here. It's at Evidence Based Movement, and I'm gonna link it below, and you guys can check his page out and uh, see all the stuff that he's doing. And I'll have him back so we can talk more about training principles, but I would like your comments below to kind of give me some feedback on what you would be interested in. All right, guys.